Hey all, we are here with licensed trauma therapist Colleen Nelson. She's a business coach, the licensed therapist, and an international retreat host. She's here to talk with me about all things transformational, getting away from the bottom of the rut that you're in, and all things therapy, all the fun stuff we love to talk <laughs> about, and all that joy. What's going on, Colleen? Hey. Super excited to be here. Super excited. I know you love to talk. You ready to talk about some therapy and some some of your stories? I know you, you got all kinds of uh, yeah. people you clients you work with, and you hear their stories. And so, yeah. I know I would love to hear. I don't know, like tips and tricks, or like some stories that you can share that are yeah. uh, you know transformational. People, a lot of people that I t I speak with, you know, from Instagram and everything, they talk about how they're stuck in a rut, how they are. Mm. They feel trapped and they like they kind of know what they want to do, but they don't know like the first next step, um, how to get over any mental hurdles, things like that. So that's kind of the topic of what I want to talk about. But how are you today? Like, let's let's start there. Some brilliant small talk. <laughs> well, you know me. I don't do small talk, Mike, but yes, I <laughs> I'm doing really good. I actually had an incredible call right before this with a mastermind of mine where um, I'm actually a client. Um, I do mm -hmm. my own work as well as do work. And I was speaking to what you actually just said, because I went through quite a period of stuckness for myself in the last year, year and a half. And I, very recently, I'd say in the last six months, but definitely more in the last three months, I have felt an expansion. I have felt, I felt that almost that that gateway that I've been looking for, like, what direction do I choose? Where do I go? Where's that first step? It's finally like lit up. And but I feel like was, every step I'm right? taking. I, 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 mean, I never heard you say this before. Cause, uh, cause we've, we've spoken quite a few times and, um, yeah. what's this, you said you realized you were in a rut. How did you realize you were in a rut? What do you mean? Yeah. Well, it's, I'll call it like a stuckness. A rut for me is, is a harder word to, to word use, but I would say in navigating my divorce, um, I had to put a pause on so many things mm -hmm. and just deal with things on the home front, right? In terms of business, in terms of my own personal development as well. I just had to literally deal with the chaos that was occurring. And for anybody that has left a relationship or is even con considering it, it's, there's so many logistics to deal with. And as a mother, it was, uh, it made that decision even more complicated because of course my decision affected my children as well. And so I was in this stuck pattern with my ex that we co-parent really well, we're good friends, um, but there isn't a connection between us anymore due to lots of different things that have happened. And so we were just kind of playing family and like just not really moving beyond the same old thing. And I sold my dream home and I moved in with my parents and I shifted a lot of things in my therapeutic practice. I was doing uh, in-person therapy mainly, hourly therapy, and I was really not getting activated in the same way that I did when I would host retreats, when I would uh, stand as a speaker and speak about trauma. Uh, it wasn't the same as when I would work with business owners who were really looking at growth in a very different way. And I was craving this expansion of my business, but also in myself. And I was very reluctant to do it because it's very scary, right? And the reason it was scary was because in order for me to take a step forward, in order for me to expand in the direction I wanted to go, I had to release things that were very comfortable or things that I felt kept me safe. And that hesitancy, that fear, it kept me stuck because I yeah. kept going back to what was safe. What was that? Was there like a moment when you realized you're like, all right, this is enough. Like you, you feel the kind of, it sounds what I'm hearing you describe, right? It's like you kind of are, mm -hmm. um, on the quote unquote downfall, not really a downfall, but like you, you're feeling yourself get into that space where you're, you're describing all those feelings that you're having, right? As you start mm -hmm. going into that space of, of that, what you just described, was there a moment where you said, I got to turn this? What was that moment maybe for you? If there was one, there were many. Um, I'm the kind of person that's like, Hey universe, I need a sign of your sign, please. Right. You know, the universe sends me probably 8 million signs and there. I'm like, Nope, give me a bigger one. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I would, I would say multiple, multiple signs for me. Um, 
And this is why for me, mentorship and coaching and therapy is so important like as a client mm -hmm. because that is, those were the moments, right? I would say something to someone who was on the other side of this, who had already led themselves through this and they would activate something in me that's like, wait a second, okay, that is possible. Um, I would talk to friends who are on the other side of divorce. I would talk to people in happy, healthy, loving, incredibly expanding relationships with their partner. I would expose myself to the life at which I was craving and just listening to them is what slowly shifted me. And the big ahas for me, it's, it's never this moment that's just like, oh, now I'm 180 degree different. Mm -hmm. It is like everything just accumulates. And the biggest ahas always come for me when I set boundaries with myself and I set boundaries with the people that I love. And that is so hard. And I think that work, that embodiment of the work is really what shifted everything. And it's, it seems simple, but yeah, right. No, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I hear these things, you know, kind of left and right. Uh, and so if you can't, what are some of those boundaries you kind of set for yourself? Uh, it sounds like most people need to do, you know, self work, look inward and kind of figure out what they have going on here before they can really address this outside stuff. Like, can you, are there any examples you can share of some, of some self made boundaries for your, for yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so one of the big ahas was, and I launched a program with this name for that reason was I need to choose me. I choose mm -hmm. me. And it was literally in every aspect of my life. Like I need to choose me when getting dressed in the morning. Mm -hmm. I need to choose me when looking at my morning routine. I need to choose me when accepting a client or not accepting a client. I wasn't actually setting a boundary with my own needs. In fact, I was basing my needs off of the other person in all areas. I was kind of tricking myself in a way, thinking that I had good healthy boundaries because I don't, you can't convince me to do something I don't want to do per se, but I didn't even know I didn't want to do it because I wasn't asking myself the question, is this something I actually want to do? I was just responding. I was constantly in this place of responding to others instead of responding to myself. So the first step for me was to carve out time in my life that wasn't filled. That I call them space fillers. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this can be um, scrolling. This can be a person, this can be an activity, but space fillers are when you're feeling uncomfortable in your body, kind of anxious, maybe even like craving something sweet. That's actually part of what our body will do. And what we're wanting is we're wanting a sense of belonging. We're wanting purpose. We're wanting connection. And so it's looking for that in all the areas we typically go to. And instead of seeking it outside of myself, I would, I would pull out my journal. I would meditate or I would literally just like fall on the floor and cry listening to Adele, you sure. know, like I would <laughs> let myself actually feel the craving, the desire without trying to fill it with something that wasn't really going to satiate what I was actually wanting. So it kind of, it's, I mean, it sounds like knowing what your priorities are and placing them in front is what I'm hearing. Right. Yeah. So like, you mentioned like taking on certain clients or no, um, even like getting yourself dressed in the morning or what you're going to eat or whatever. So it's just like, you're just thinking in a, in a positively self-serving manner. And it's like, when I say self-serving in a way that is it, it, to benefit yourself in order to be able to help and benefit others. Right. You mm -hmm. have to like, gotta have that good foundation is what I'm hearing. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, even asking myself the question, what do I want was huge. And, right. and I think this, this could be a little bit more of a woman thing. I'm being a little gendered here, but I do think being a millennial, I was raised to the way that I show up and be kind and be loving and be a woman is to put everybody else first. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it, it's contradictory where I'm like, no, no, no. I actually have to put myself first in order to do anything for anybody else. And that, it, that is so subtle in the ways that we betray ourselves. It's mm -hmm. so subtle. And as a mother, I mean, tenfold. Right. It's, I have a running joke. I don't make people uncomfortable, but I have a running joke <laughs> with my female clients who are moms. I'm like, when was the last time you pooped? Right. Did you, did you take time to do it this week? Did you, did you do it? Cause women literally, what are the responses? What do they, what do they say to that? <laughs> 
Mike, I'm telling you, you'd be Call surprised. Call is personal. Don't, don't talk to me about that. Like, what do they say? <laughs> yeah, this women, women will literally, like, stop going to the bathroom. They'll stop the desire to pee, to poop, to meet the needs of their children or other people. It's, there are major issues about it, actually. And especially, like, right at the beginning, like, postpartum is a really yeah. big issue. So, um, it, it's a thing. It's a thing that I talk about with my clients where I'm like, make time to comfortably poop. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Take time to do it. Your I husband's think I will. Agree. Yeah. Oh, for sure. That's a, that's a sacred time. I like to, it's a, it's, I have a moment on the toilet. Absolutely. Oh yeah. You, you all do. You, you all do. We get in, we get out. Okay. Like it's an in and out yeah. thing, but for women being relaxed and it's, it's not just going to the bathroom. It's eating. It's self pleasure. It's like anything that you do for your body, for yourself. Mm -hmm. gets put to the side for everybody else's needs. You know, another question I ask is, when was the last time you masturbated? Oh, well, what do you mean? I'm married or I'm in a relationship. I'm like, I don't care. Right. <laughs> like, when was the last time you pleasured yourself? And these are these are topics that not, people don't talk about, but if any women are listening, they're like, oh my God, yes. Because this is what happens. It's this subtle form of self-betrayal because we are taught that to be a good woman, to be a good mom, to be a good person, you sacrifice your needs for other people. That very people-pleasing kind of mentality to the extreme. I find that same kind of idea with myself when I was in marriage. I've you know, been divorced for five years or so now, whatever it is. And uh, it's slow, like it's, I feel like it slowly can happen, like a slippery slope where like eh, one thing, then the next. And then it becomes you know those things you just decided one time back here start to be the norm and then it again happens with like a new topic or a new situation and it just like builds and builds until all of a sudden you're just like doing all these things you're like fuck i don't like i don't like any of this and then like it just hits you yeah. uh yeah that's yes. i i can understand that for sure i think a lot of people can relate to that once you realize that how do you start peeling back those <laughs> those non-self-serving things right like how do you mm -hmm. i mean because if you're in a relationship you know so i like bringing this up and i i hope people that are in relationships that feel stuck listen to this and listen you know watch my videos and all those things because i i hear from people that are very close to me and this hurts my heart that like people feel so stuck in a relationship that they would like and they and, and they they fear a divorce or a breakup or a separation for many reasons but they fear it so much that they would rather wait for that person, that, that partner to, to die, right? Of natural mm -hmm. causes, whatever. Like, you know, they'd rather wait for that person to die than to have to deal with the divorce or the breakup. Mm -hmm. I've heard that mm -hmm. numerous times from people that are very close to me. And that's heartbreaking, right? Yeah. Yes. And, and, I, and I know, I know they're doing exactly that. That people pleasing, um, serving others, which, you know, to, to the point yeah. where they're breaking down, right? How do you stop that train that's crashing in the wrong direction mm -hmm. of only serving others? You know, I, 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 there's like a, there's a balance there of like duty to serve mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, you know, cause I, you know, I serve Ellie, my daughter, right? So like I do a lot of things that are, I sacrifice things for her. Um, but in a way that's mutually beneficial, with a, with a leniency towards helping her more versus myself. Right. Um, so I think there's a balance, but how, but people that are crashing, like ultimately in the wrong direction, I would say, how do you, how do you pump the brakes? How do you, how do you stop uh, that stop shit? Stop doing it alone. Number one, right. stop doing it alone. Right. Like you can't do it alone. Um, we can't break our patterns alone. We are communal beings. We need support. We need help and start talking to people who have done it. So, whether it's somebody who is in a wonderfully happy marriage that finally had the conversations they needed to have to heal and, and really transform their marriage into a healthy space or someone who's been through divorce and is happy on the other side. Um, talk to somebody who does know how to balance choosing themselves and putting the people they love as a priority um, and surround yourself with people doing the work. I think it is community based. It, if you surround yourself with people who are all people pleasing, you're going to people please. It's going to be really difficult to break out of that. And 
as a therapist and, and business mentor, I see this all the time. I mean, this mm-hmm. is one of the reasons that people actually gravitate towards me is because I'm very active about speaking to this because I want them to know they're not alone. But that's first and foremost. And then you start having these conversations regularly to keep yourselves accountable with somebody that can say, wait a second, wait a second. You just said to me that you were really excited to have a weekend to recharge but now we're talking about how busy you were. Let's let's dig into that. Let's talk about why you said yes to all of those things and all those people, right? And, and to have those deeper conversations. And then for me as a therapist, I tie that back to the patterns they learned in childhood, which was in order to be loved, in order to belong, I have to sacrifice myself. I actually can't be the full expression of myself because if I am, you're going to be mad, you're going to leave, you're going to hurt me. Um, these are messages we received as children. And children are watching us too. So Mm -hmm. if they see us people please, if they see us self-sacrifice, they're also going to take on that pattern and believe they have to do it themselves. And there's a difference between being kind and prioritizing people and stepping in and self-sacrifice. Those are two very different things. Somebody should be able to be kind without hurting themselves. You are not hurting yourself by putting your daughter first. In fact, it's probably benefiting you to say no to some of the things you'd want to say yes to, sure. to be there to have quality time with your daughter, right? It's just a different want versus not pooping for a week mm-hmm. because your kids are rushed in the morning. You know, that's, that's clearly two different things. <laughs> um, and I think that's, we have to be very clear about what the difference is between prioritization and self-sacrifice. And that can help people really understand what changes need to happen like today in order to start making those moves forward. Yeah. I mean, okay. I like all of it. It's, it's, it seems so doable, Colleen. <laughs> like <laughs> it seems so simple when you say it like that, like, why don't we all just solve this problem? Uh, no, it's <laughs> That's the goal. It, right. Yeah. No, it's a very, it's just a very relatable concept of like, Oh, I'll just, mm-hmm. I'll just do it. I'll just keep doing this and, and never kind of stop in the buck or, you know, whatever you want to call it, just stop mm-hmm. in that train. So, um, all right. Yeah. But like, so, okay. So to get off of the sad sob side of this conversation, this is <laughs> where I live, Mike, come on. Now. Let's it's called depth. It's called I know. depth. <laughs> but continue. Let's talk, let's talk about some lighter things. Some lighter things. Well, whenever you and I talk, it seems like so we've done some I, some Instagram lives and stuff. Mm-hmm. Our topics tend to lean towards dating stuff, which is fun, frustrating, all the joys of humans and all they bring. But I like our conversations with dating because they do go in depth and they do answer some questions that can be applied to dating or to just relationships, whether it's like uh, you know family, sexual, or with other people, partners, like or not, like whatever the yeah. relationship is with the person. Um, I like the concept. So dating, what is going on in your dating life, Colleen? Oh, there you go. Nice lighthearted question. <laughs> Absolutely fucking nothing. Nothing. Right? Absolutely nothing. And I'm okay with Same-sies. it. Samesies. I, uh, yeah, I raised my standards high. Um, I raised my standards high because he, I, I raised my own standards. I became a different version of myself. And so... I was on the dating apps there for a while and going on a few dates and they, they weren't bad. Like these, these men were not bad people, but they were just not my match. I live in a very different reality than most people as an entrepreneur and as a women's leader. Mm -hmm. And so I've made a firm kind of stance that I need a man who can lead as well. He doesn't Mm -hmm. need to do what I do, but I need a leader. I need someone who can own the space in the same way I own the space in a community. And to be honest with you, I'd actually like to co-lead with somebody and kind of create uh, programs with them and create things with them in the future. And fully being able to embrace that and really actually see and and want to manifest that person and and call that person in has been really cool to see. And now I'm just being introduced to a lot of men like this, Um, not necessarily men that I would date, but men that are at that caliber, you being Mm -hmm. one of them. Mm -hmm. And it's really incredible to be in the presence of men who are leading in a way that I haven't experienced I live in Fort Collins, Colorado, which is a, you know, small suburban college town. And there's a lot of incredible men here, but it's, there is a smaller exposure of people doing what I do. So now I'm really starting to see these people come into my world and it's really cool 
and it makes me excited. But I actually just did a podcast on this on my podcast episode. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can speak to this, Mike, but I have a group of women who I adore who all went through divorce at the same time I did, and they are all falling in love right now. How long like, ago did they, did, did they get divorced? Uh, I'd say like three, four years, a couple okay. years at least. Yeah. They're in a good, healthy space. They've done their work and they, they found some pretty incredible people. Um, and it's really beautiful to see. Um, and it's also really hard to see. Mm -hmm. It's also, it, it triggers that stuff in me. That's like, well, maybe I should lower my standards or I should change something about what I'm looking for. Maybe I'm being too much. Um, and that's when my self work comes in hardcore, right? Like that's where I have to really tune in and say, no, what is it that I actually want? And I can celebrate their love and be excited for them and not feel like it's not possible for me just because it hasn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. And so that's been a really interesting stage in the divorce world that I wasn't necessarily expecting, but it's here and it's teaching me a lot of lessons around, um, really just how to hold the space for what I know I deserve and not get scared. <laughs> Yeah. So like what, so the women you're referencing, mm -hmm. they have, you know, they're three, four, whatever plus years from divorce. What have they been doing since divorce as far as, uh, you know, career, family, other life stressors or time obligations, right? Cause what I'm kind of getting at is mm -hmm. I'm kind of asking were were they prioritizing dating, finding a partner, right? Cause I feel like Absolutely. if you, if you, you know, someone being focused on a target and if the target is to find a mm -hmm. very compatible, loving life partner for the rest of your life, right? If you focus on this like project, <laughs> I guess you could say finding a human, you know, I think it can be done, right? There's lots of examples out there of like very high powered men and women who have referenced this saying that if they, you know, they they thought it was their time. Okay, I want to find a partner. I'm ready for it. I'm ex mm -hmm. I think it's going to be beneficial for both of us to start a life together and do these things, uh, business, family, whatever it is. But they just focused on dating like it was a job because it is a job. It takes so much time, effort, intention, all the things, strategy. And, and so I'm curious if these women that you're referencing, if they were just like da dating or were they actually like, I'm finding my guy, boom, 18 months later, two years later, got him. So, so I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you on this one a little bit, Mike, because I don't think it's that easy actually. Okay. Um, I do think that in order to be ready for that person to come, you do need to make a decision in your head that you're ready to find that person. I, I agree with you on that one for sure. That putting time and effort and energy into the dating world is what will get you to that place. But it is timing. It is timing and it is factors we cannot control, period, end of story. Um, and that is the scary part that, that we all freak out about. Um, because here's the thing, they're all three very different in the way that they this landed in their lap. One of them actually found her person uh, like a couple weeks after her divorce is final. And it's mm -hmm. one of the healthiest relationships I've ever seen. She was actually not in a place where she wanted to date. She wanted to kind of explore. But it was so healthy and beautiful and their relationship is just really exactly what it needs to be. They're a couple years in now. Um, it just was right. The timing was right. So she, she leapt and she trusted and, and moved with it. Um, another one was kind of on and off the apps, deleted all of the apps, was done with dating, and then um, had forgotten to delete one of them. So she went mm -hmm. back in to delete it and her guy had messaged her. Oh, funny. And so she found him. And then another one is what you're saying. She's like, okay, it's time. I'm going to get serious. I'm going to date. She went on a couple of dates and then she met this really great guy. So it's a little frustrating because also keep this in mind. They're like, we went on three dates and then found our partner. And I'm like, okay, fuck you. But also they've been actively um, in relationships, situationships, different, you know, things over the course of the last couple of years. So it's not like they just decided, but when, when that last one made the decision for her to find her partner, she's like, okay, well, I made this decision six months ago. I made this decision that I was ready. I was ready for him. I was ready for this partner. 
I was ready for what I wanted and I did. I seriously dated. I went on the apps and I am a badass business bitch. I can make goals happen. I can't make this one happen because the timing isn't right or he's not ready or he hasn't walked into my world. And, and there was a surrender piece I had to have to what is meant for me will find me that has brought peace back into my heart because that grasping, searching energy, especially as a woman, wasn't sexy. It's much better to be in a place of abundance and happiness in my own life and desiring a partner to share that with and being almost like a magnet rather than being the seeker. And maybe for a man, it is a different energy. It is a decision where you're like, okay, I'm going to get serious about it. And you seek and you pursue. And that is how you find your partner. But as a woman, it is much more, I'm just going to be the, I'm going to be the desired. I'm going to, I'm going to have someone pursue me. I truly want that energy. Um, and that's, that's the truth. That's, that's my experience of it at least. Yeah. I'm not going to understand that. Uh, in, so it's, yeah, I, I don't really mean when I say put time to date to like, I'm trying to find someone and like, that's the energy that you're giving on these dates. It's like, I'm looking for someone. Cause like, yeah, that is very off putting. <laughs> that's off putting for anybody. Like I'm trying to find someone to fill this square. Do you fill the square? And it's like, <laughs> leave me alone. Thanks. Um, yeah, not that kind of energy, but I, I guess no. I, I might, I might've misphrased it, but what I mean is like, yeah. So setting aside time and yeah. energy, to yes, go yes. on these dates, right? You still bring your full authentic self, which is like, I'll, when the right person's here, I'll find them. But like, if you, yes. you know, if over the course of two years, you know, say you're going on dates 48 weeks out of the year, let's say spend four weeks with family, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> two, two, three nights a week, just trying to like, just trying to find some, you know, you're going, you go through a couple hundred people over a couple, mm -hmm. you know, a couple years. Um, yeah. And, uh, I feel like, you know, it's almost like content. Uh, a lot of the big mm -hmm. content creators in this world, like YouTube, all the big ones, you know, when they, when someone asks, when someone new asks them, Hey, how do I get to where you're at? You know, kind of the idea here is like someone who's married and happy. How do I get to where you're at? The, the content creators always say, you know, post a hundred videos as fast as you can. Right. And before you get to a hundred videos, you're going to, you're going to adjust, you're going to recalibrate, you're going to figure out how to do it right if you're actually putting time, effort and energy into figuring this out and you really care about this thing, right. Of being like a content creator, mm -hmm. <clears throat> a YouTuber, a podcaster, whoever. And, and I love that concept to be applied to a lot of things, right. Um, doesn't mean it always works or applies directly, but, uh, the idea of get started in that direction and start traveling that path. Like you can't, mm -hmm. you can't get to step 10 if you don't take steps one and two. So like, stop worrying about steps six, seven and eight when you're still on step one, like just get going. Um, but I understand yeah. what you're talking about for sure. Uh, well, and it's, I do think it's different masculine and, and feminine energy. I do. I think men also, I, I think dating is an important part of actually being ready to find your partner. Right, mm -hmm. like just dating itself, like feeling it out, seeing what you want, seeing what you don't want. I think when you finally figure it out, um, like I, I will not go on a hundred dates. I will go on very few mm -hmm. because I already know how to uh, decide it's a no or a yes pretty quickly. And that's not because I'm judging someone. It's because I know what I'm looking for and right. I don't want to waste anyone's time, but I also don't want to waste mine. My energy is very precious and my time is very precious. But and I'm so sure it took I'm you a few open. dates to figure that out, right? Yeah. Like very much so. Yeah. The people that you filter yeah. out now, you're like, after having a whatever conversation, yeah. ever, excuse me, ever how long you're like, Oh, I see where this is, where this is going. I've already learned through experience that I don't, I don't like that or I don't, yeah. it's not going to work. So I assume. That and my own self work. I didn't have to learn it from someone else. I, I, you can, sure. but I also learned it because of getting to know myself better. So, um, there's, there's a woman who wrote, uh, becoming the one she is the rising woman on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And she talked a lot about this in finding her husband, Ben, who is called the evolving man on Instagram. They're a really amazing conscious couple. Mm -hmm. And she talks about how she did a lot of self work. She really do deep dove into her own healing process. When she emerged on the other side, she was not interested in dating a bunch of people. In fact, she wasn't really interested in dating anybody. Um, she was ready for somebody to come in and, and, and pursue her or someone to kind of come out of really make it worth it. And, 
and it's not that she was closed off to dating, I mean, at all. It was more this, I am so fulfilled and I am so happy and I'm so expanded already that I just want to find someone to explore this with. And she was able to find find him. And then again, your work begins because you just, right. you know, that is not just like all butterflies and roses. Then you have to do the next layer of self work. Right. But this, like this feeling of I'm okay is really beautiful. And I think that's a big issue we have right now is that people are just constantly searching for someone because they think it's going to make them feel better than they do right now. And I'm not saying that you can feel totally whole alone. I think we are meant to partner up. We are meant to be in community. But what I'm saying is, if you find yourself on the dating apps going off date after date after date, really trying to figure out what you want or, or looking for that person, I want, I want that second question to be, is this something I need to do through dating? Or can mm -hmm. I do this through dating and with myself? Or is this something I really just need to be doing with myself? And those are great questions to talk with somebody that you you um, trust and know because it, it, it's a different answer for everybody. Dating is super fun for mm -hmm. people. It can also be super stressful. Um, and there is no one answer for everyone. I just find that if we're really looking for conscious relationship, you have to first become a conscious being. And that involves removing yourself from that unending dating cycle. Which I think we, you were speaking to, right? Like mm -hmm. not putting energy into it because you're putting energy into other pieces. Mm -hmm. And so when you finally put your energy into it, it's coming from a really healthy place. Right. I'm, I'm thinking of like any high powered or, or, you know, big businessmen and women, people who are seemingly successful in life. Uh, do you have any of those people in your clientele group that are sh either struggling in a relationship or in dating? And if so, like what, what are their struggle points? What are their main, what issues are those relationships having? People that are seemingly successful, right? Mm -hmm. what, are the, what, what problems are they having? And I, I'm a asking that thinking I kind of know some of the answers and I just want to hear it from your, your side. So people, can, <laughs> people can also hear that like, yeah, it's, it's, it's this. I'm, I'm curious. Yeah. Uh, it's really difficult sometimes to be vulnerable when you're in a position of power in a lot of other areas in your life. Um, that can be a struggle and figuring out how to navigate intimacy and vulnerability with another person when you are the boss. Um, or again, when you're the expert, when you're the expert and you know what you're doing in this arena, dating is a novice sport, right? Like we start out as novices with one another. So, mm -hmm. so being in that space is difficult. For high-powered women, it's exactly what I was just speaking to. It's really difficult for us to pull in and be the magnet and be desirable. We want to seek. We want to grab. We want to find. We want to make it a mission. And that is not the divine feminine. That's not the energy that actually attracts the kind of man that we want. Because we want a man that can match our energy. We want... Um, there's a lot of language about, like, I want the king that can match my queen. You know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But, like, we want the man that can be not opposite of us, but like really come in and match our energy, but also teach us something new. And those men are attracted to women who are not necessarily in all of their masculine energy, calling the shots, making the plans, um, making the first move. It's not that women can't do that. I'm very, very pro that balance, but mm -hmm. there is something about being desired and being pursued that I think high powered women are really craving, but they're not allowing, um, for high powered men, it is it, it, treating it a little bit like a job, having a more emotional distance when really what, what they need to step into is their, their feminine side a little bit more. They need to have that masculine edge and that powerhouse coming in, but they also need to be willing to actually want something. Right, they have everything they need, but they need to want something, and it's not this this thing to be acquired, but it's this this curiosity and this desire to get to know somebody and to allow somebody into the space of their world. They don't allow many people. High powered men are usually very in control. Um, they've got a lot of really healthy habits that they use to take care of themselves. They don't really actually feel lonely that often. They they might, but not often. And when they do feel lonely. Um, they have different ways that they can meet that need. And so it's actually about deepening the awareness that what they crave is something more than meeting the need of loneliness. They crave a woman that matches their power as well. They crave 
partnership in a way that hasn't necessarily been demonstrated to us in our generation. And so I think high powered men and women who are very successful are, are needing to redefine what relationships look like because it does look different for two leaders than it does for people who are in a different dynamic. Yeah. And those are all great, very insightful. Do you, do you notice with the high powered women and men that you work with, are they typically partnered with other kind of high powered successful in their own space people? It doesn't necessarily need to match with like high powered wealth, but they right. need to have somebody who can lead in a different way. So you could have an incredibly powerful teacher, mm -hmm. like a man who's a teacher, right? Who just like kills it as this incredible teacher leads kids and just his masculine energy is empowered and on point. And then his wife mm -hmm. is this like high powered attorney. Mm -hmm. It doesn't like, it doesn't matter how much money you make. It, it, it's the presence in the room. You can have a stay at home dad, have the masculine presence that matches his badass, you know, high powered woman. It's, it, it is about the energy that you step into your life. in. I just find that people who make wealth and who our bosses who are leaders um, tend to want someone who can match that energy and and struggle to find that in mm -hmm. in a lot of different arenas gotcha that makes sense that energy that comes out you know it's mm -hmm. they're just successful in whatever they do no yeah. matter what they do they just bring that confidence or that that level yes. of focus that makes sense i mean I, I i agree with that a lot what are some of the most frequent issues you have that you have that your clients have I get a lot of I get a lot of different clients, but I would say um, it is high powered women who are incredible at their careers and they're looking for something deeper. They're looking for a deeper connection to themselves. They're looking for a healthier relationship, whether they're coupled up or not. They're looking for an expansion in their presence in the world. They're they're already usually financially successful, but they want they want impact. They want depth. They want intimacy. And they Why really haven't they figured it out? Figure that out? They sound like <laughs> smart, smart people. How come they haven't figured it out? Uh, because they were set up for failure by generations preceding us. <laughs> Hello. All right. I just wanted to hear your point of view. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not judging them. I don't know them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's, I mean, some have. Some have figured it out. But I mean, obviously, they're not entering my reality in that way. Um, we all have our journeys, right? We all have yeah. our area of life that needs more growth and for some women it's relationships for others it's business for other people it's presence um it's this desire for growth most of my clients desire growth at all times they want to continue to expand for their entire life they're not looking for just to fix this problem i don't get people who are like this is my crisis fix it it's like no like these are the things i'm working on i want more presence i want more depth i want more joy and that's, that's who gets attracted in my world. And that's different than most therapists. I do, because I'm a business coach, therapist, and I run these retreats, this is, it's a very different kind of person that usually walks into my world. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm constantly trying to do something. I sound like one of your high-powered women, I feel like. <laughs> it's like- A little bit, a little, little bit. bit. <laughs> I like, there's so many things I'm not, not just that I wanna do, that I am doing, I'm doing the things that I wanna do, right? I'm in the middle of them and it's just doing it in the most efficient or in a more efficient way than I am at all times. Right. I'm trying to just do the best I can at each of those things. So it's, it's like a struggle for sure, uh, to just balance it, but still crush it. And so some things I have to say, no to some things I have to cut off, like in order, you know, you, you know, you chase two rabbits, you catch zero. Right. So, um, you got to focus on one thing or enough things at a time. Uh, that's my problem. Do you have any questions for me right now? So, you know, what keeps you from your fullest expression of self? My fullest expression? Am I not expressing myself, Colleen? I don't know. Fullest expression of self in life, right? Like. You, you talk a lot about all of these things that you want to do and the, the past you want. So what keeps you from leaping, from jumping, from going all in? Whether it's a relationship or a job or a career or an experience, you know, what are the areas that you still feel held back in and why? I think I, like, I go all in on certain areas, on certain things I like to do 
but then I have so many things that I want to do that I can't fully just commit to one thing. And when I have done that in the past, I, I it's the shiny object syndrome, right? I, I, I travel mm-hmm. past that. I'm like, okay, I can be successful in this thing or I can be, you know, I, I'm, Oh, I figured it out. Now what? Like I'm, I'm I get bored. And so that, that there I've seen, yeah, that I've seen, I get, I've seen it's like a, not a detriment, but like a, it's like a, it's like, like mortgages, right? So I mean, I'm still a mortgage loan officer and I talk to my branch manager all the time and he, he's like, Mike, if you focus on just, just this, you can do X, Y, and Z. And there's like a proven path to it, right? There's, you know, there's not many things in this world that are, that are not, not have been done before, right? There's a few, those are the Mark Zuckerbergs, the Elon Musks, the whatever, mm-hmm. um, there's some untraveled paths that people figure out. There's tons of paths that have been traveled that are like great paths that you can make all kinds of money, have all kinds of fun and have a great life and do the things. Uh, he's like, if you just focus on this one thing, you'll just crush it. I'm like, yeah, I'd focused for like so many months to where I see success and I see like what I can do. And it's like, oh yeah, I'm doing the thing. Mm -hmm. I see the path. It's not that fun. (laughs) (laughs) Like, yeah, all day like mortgages all day every day all month like nah i can't do it (laughs) i go crazy so it's for me it's fig it's going down each path far enough to realize like keep taking steps in each path until i don't like taking steps down that path right and right now i'm loving the paths i'm taking steps down um a lot of the paths i'm stepping down with like social media and doing the podcast and like um you know, I'm building like building an online course and like speaking events and then like uh, the retreat we're doing together. And then like a lot of these have, you know, are very synergistic and like they're, they all kind of work together or can work together uh, with a common goal and and same similar targets. And so I, what I'm what I'm learning is that I'd, I'd like I like that right now. I like how mm-hmm. I'm working on, you know, six different things, but they all kind of revolve around the same same topic so for me that's helping that's helping me be my full self because i i can commit to this this big lane right if it's a single lane like mortgages like one thing right like sales follow up call people schmooze at happy hour go golfing ah, all the same shit like i can't do it but this this lane that i'm on currently has like seven lanes Mm -hmm. but they're all kind of going in the same direction i like that road a lot better than the single lane highway. I like the seven lane LA highway. I like that. Uh, and I'm going to keep sprinting down this, this highway until I don't like it anymore. But there's, there's so many things I love about it right now. So I'm, I'm, I'm all in this way. That's for sure. That's where I'm at. Yeah. It sounds to me like your fullest expression of self happens when you're lit up by something, when you, when you feel like it it connects to that deeper goal of yours right which i the reason why i ask the question is because i think when it comes to dating and it comes to people you know it's the same concept but there is going to be something unique about whatever relationship you decide on where this person is consistently surprising you or going on different adventures and i think it's always good to ask yourself you know the questions of what is my fullest expression of self and what gets me there? And if it's having variety and challenges and, and shifting expressions, but all coming back down to this place of like bettering someone's life, it's pretty easy to make decisions from that place of knowing what direction you want to go and weeding a lot of things out before you even have to start the path because you have have that basis and that foundation. Yeah. And I have it. So like you mentioned, like the lane I'm traveling down is, is like the fullest expression of, the inner goals that I have or the inner goal that I'm reaching towards. And I haven't even fully defined, like I'm in the middle of painting the, the picture of the goal I have, right? I'm in the middle of figuring out what it looks like. And I'm, I'm seeing glimpses and, and flashes of that goal. Um, yeah. but to articulate that goal right now, I, I couldn't give it to you in one sentence. Uh, and that's what I've been working on, uh, especially around business and social media and like this podcast, like this sign behind me, right? Like this whole thing, this thing like why why the hell are you doing this right 
Why'd you mm-hmm. start making content? Like, well, you all see my name on Instagram and it's Mortgage Mike. I started it for mortgages. That's where this path started. And it's that door opened up an, a hallway where I see more doors. And I'm like, ah, shit, what's this door over here? And right, it's so like I'm going down this path of doors that I didn't even know existed uh, simply by posting videos, honestly, and, and having fun with it. And I'm slow, like, but, but these doors are, are all, there's, 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 there tends to be a common theme I'm seeing with the doors that I'm opening and and what opportunities are behind these doors that are are helping me paint the picture of the goal that's within me, uh, that I haven't quite defined to a sentence yet. Right. Um, but I, I feel like I'm so close to just doing that thing, like that goal, like, and then these things that I'm working on on the seven lane highway are all, I know have all helped me figure out a better picture of this goal. And like, I'm just so close to figuring that part out. So that's what I'm working on. And that's what I'm literally, literally doing every day with doing these, these, these conversations with people like yourself. Right. (laughs) So it helps paint those pictures or that picture. Um, so that's what I'm working on. Love the question. Okay. Uh, last question. If there's, if you could tell someone who, who does feel stuck in their life, whether it's a relationship their career, their post-divorce, their pre-divorce, someone who, again, is just feeling stuck in a position where they, and, and, and they have this thing they want to do, but they don't know what to do next, right? They don't know what step one is. They know there's 10 steps to it and they see step 10, maybe like the goal, but they don't know what steps, step one is. What would you tell this person how to get past themselves? Step one is find somebody, somebody who's already d- done it and get inspired rather than feel shamed comparative or competing get inspired by someone who's already done it listen to their podcast read their book get in their reality get in their energy and then the rest will follow yes that's so spot on i i I feel like you like knew like you're talking to me colleen (laughs) always always mike (laughs) always everything i do I am not paving a new path that's never been traveled, right? I'm, I'm paving my own style of path, uh, but with like real estate, with like say podcasting, say content creation. I'm all if you like, if you all see my for you page or my discover page or my the videos that I watch or who I follow, just look who I follow on Instagram. You'll see a common theme. Uh, mm-hmm. It's people who are doing things that I aspire to do, or they have kind of correlating skills or mindsets that are doing what I want to do. And I'm constantly just being around, I'm around that content. I'm consuming it. I'm talking about, it, I'm commenting, I'm listening, I'm doing that stuff. And that's exactly how I got started in real estate, you know, doing flips and rental properties, and Airbnbs. Like I didn't figure it out on my own. I figured out how to figure it out on my own. Talk to people, Facebook groups, networking events, DM mm-hmm. somebody, all the things. That's so smart. Be around people who are doing the things you want to do. And the rest will show itself. I love that. Give yourself a plug. What you got going on? What do you sell? How do you make money? How can someone give you money if they love you? (laughs) Well, you can find everything that I'm doing uh, on my website, which is nextleveltherapy.com. And really, I do one-on-one sessions. I also have some group programs that I run. If you want to join our community, come get in our energy. And then the big things I'm doing right now are the retreats. So I've got the singles retreat with you coming up in February. There's still some spots there. I'd love to see some people sign up. And I've got a women's retreat in Greece uh, in June. So I've got those two that I'm enrolling for here currently. And yeah, come check out my website. Come check out me on Instagram, Next Level Therapy, and see what I'm up to. Love it. Colleen Nelson, licensed trauma therapist, business coach, international retreat host on Instagram, next level therapy, next level therapy.com. Go give her money, do all the things, <laughs> <laughs> send this podcast to everybody. All right. Well, I appreciate your time, Colleen, and we'll do some more lives together. I already know it. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thanks again.